had some time this weekend and a desire to create something new and interesting so went ahead and created a node mcu based indoor dial thermometer this device displays the temperature in degree centigrade on a d-shaped gorge as well as on a 7 segment display. In addition to that, it also saves the temperature and humidity readings in a MySQL database hosted on a home based Raspberry Pi server. The data is then displayed using the Our Smart Home app. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can also order advanced PCBs, aluminium PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need to the greatest extent. For this project we need 2 TM1637 display modules, 1 DHT22 or DHT11 module, 1 node MCU, 1 stepper motor with ULN2003 driver board, 1 10K resistor, a 3D printer, copper wire and some nuts and bolts. The circuit is very simple. Connect the ULN2003 driver boards IN1, IN2, IN3 and IN4 to the node MCU's digital pin D0, D1, D2 and D3. Then connect the out pin of the DHT22 to the D5 pin of node MCU. After that connect the two digital display modules to the microcontroller. We are going to use a common clock pin D4 for both the modules. Then connect the DIO pin of one of the modules to D6 and the other one to D7 of the node MCU. Please avoid using the boot config pins D3, D4, D8 and the RTC pin D0 for these displays. Now on the D8 pin we are going to connect the switch. The switch has a very important role in this circuit. The switch acts as the home or the starting point of the stepper motor. When the switch is open, D8 is connected to ground through the pull down resistor and we read a low. When the switch is closed, pin D8 connects to the 3.3 pin of the node MCU and we read a high. When the temperature changes or the device boots up, the pointer starts moving counterclockwise. As soon as the pointer hits the home position, pin D8 reads high and the logic moves the pointer clockwise to display the temperature on the gorge as read by the DHT22 module. The code starts by including all the necessary libraries, then it defines all the variables needed for setting up the Wi-Fi connection. Next, it assigns a static IP address to the ESP8266. If you want to use DHCP, then go ahead and delete these three lines from your code. After that, it sets up the two URLs that are needed for updating the heartbeat, temperature and humidity. Before going ahead, let's have a quick look at the two PHP files. The update status.php file uses an update query to update the timestamp of the device sending the request to the current epoch time and hence updating the heartbeat. The update temperature.php uses an insert query to add a new row to the database with the current value of temperature and humidity. This is what is written to the database and can be displayed using Google Charts. In my case, I'm using the Our Smart Home app to display the data using PHP and JavaScript. Currently, I'm only displaying the data from the study room and the peg box. To know more about my award winning peg box project, please have a look at my electronics tutorial number 34, peg box with temperature and humidity monitoring using node MCU. The link is in the description below. After that, I'm defining all the variables required for reading and storing the value of temperature and humidity. Next, I'm defining all the variables and setting up any additional symbols required for displaying the temperature and humidity on the TM1637 display module. After that, I'm defining the D8 pin of the node MCU as the reset switch pin. We will talk about this in details in the following sections. Next, I'm setting up the steps per revolution of the stepper motor to 2038 and then initializing the stepper library through pins D0 to D3. Since I need both clockwise and counterclockwise movement, I have to initialize the pins in the order shown on screen. Then in the setup section, first I'm setting up the Wi-Fi connection and then sending a heartbeat to the server. Then I'm setting up the brightness of the 7 segment display to its max value followed by starting the DHT module and finally setting up the pin mode of the switch to input. 
Now in the loop section, I'm reading the temperature using the read underscore temp function and then sending the temperature and humidity values every 30 minutes and the heartbeat every minute to the home server. Next, you see the definition of the send I am alive and send temperature and humidity functions, which utilizes the Wi-Fi connect functions to send the values using the previously discussed URLs. The read underscore temp function reads the temperature and humidity and updates the seven segment displays and moves the pointer only if there is a change in their values. The move underscore needle function sends the pointer to its home position using the return underscore home function and then looks through and moves the pointer to the correct position until the step count is equal to steps. The value of steps is calculated based on the steps per revolution, which we previously set it up as 2038. So 2038 by two for half circle is equal to 1019. Now by dividing 1019 by 180, we get the steps required to display each degree centigrade. Since our God starts from minus 10 and not from zero, we also have to add the first 10 blocks, which is 5.661 times 10 times three, to our calculation. That's it, as easy as that. Now let's have a quick look at the 3D model of the project. At the front, we have the pointer, D-shaped dial and the temperature scale on the dial. Down at the bottom, we have the enclosure that will house the microcontroller and all other electronic components in it. The enclosure has a lid to keep the electronic components safe and sound. At the back, we have a pocket to hold the DHT22 module, three holes for the stepper motor, two groves for the TM1637 display module, and two L-shaped brackets to hold the top dial to the bottom enclosure. Once the 3D models were sorted, it was time for me to fire up my 3D printing oven and start printing these 3D models. I used 1.75 mm cold white PLA filament and printed the models with 0.2 mm with 0% infill and with support. As we all know, 3D printing is the process that uses computer-aided design or CAD to create objects layer by layer. 3D printing is not a new technology. It's been there since 1980s when Charles W. Hull invented the process and created the first 3D printed part. Since then, the field of 3D printing has grown exponentially and holds countless possibilities. The 3D printing process fascinates me a lot and I sometimes love to sit near my 3D printer and watch these layers getting printed. The entire printing process took a little over 5 hours to complete and this is the final result. Alright, now let's start gluing all the printed parts. I first super glued the L-shaped bracket to the dial, followed by the pocket that will hold the DHT22 module. Then I went ahead and screwed the bottom enclosure to the top section via the L-shaped brackets. So this is how it looks like. Before adding the electronic bits to the 3D printed bits, let's do a quick test to make sure everything works as expected. So this seven segment display is displaying the temperature and the other one is displaying the humidity. The pointer is currently going round and round in circles as it has no idea where to stop. To stop the pointer and to send it to the correct position on the gorge, I need to connect this red jumper cable connected to 3.3 volts to the D8 pin of the node MCU. Once I shot the cable, the needle changes its direction and moves clockwise to display the temperature value as read from the DHT22 module. The temperature and humidity values are also sent to the home server, which are then displayed using the Our Smart Home app. Using acrylic colors, I painted all the 3D printed parts of the project. Once the coloring is done, it's now time for me to put all the electronic components together. First, I screwed the stepper motor to the back of the dial. Then I gently pushed the DHT22 module into its pocket at the back of the dial. Now the interesting bit. As per our previous discussion, we are going to use a copper wire as a switch that will move the pointer to its correct position. The copper wire will be fed through these two holes from the back 
and will loop through this small pipe-like structure in the front. A small cut will be made on the top exposed side of the copper wire. Now on the pointer, we need to add a small piece of copper wire. When this copper bit touches the two copper wires on the pipe, it will complete the circuit and will send a high to the system. Next, I'm hot gluing the two TM1637 7 segment display modules to the back of the dial. Once done, it's pretty much just a matter of soldering all the sensors to the node MCU as per our circuit diagram. So this is how my final setup looks like. Once the device is turned on, the pointer moves counterclockwise until it touches the copper wire that acts like a switch. Upon touching the wire, the pointer moves clockwise to display the temperature value read from the DHT22 module on the D-shaped gorge. The temperature and humidity values are also displayed using the 7 segment displays. The values are also sent over Wi-Fi to a Raspberry Pi home server and is stored in a MySQL database. Using Google Charts, you can display the data using various different graph options. In my case, I'm using the Our Smart Home app to display the data using PHP and JavaScript. Thanks for watching. Please comment and let me know if there are any scopes of improvement. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.